Today we're going to learn about solubility equilibrium or KSP. Solubility equilibrium is all around us. You may recognize in this photograph I have stalactites, which you find in caves. One of the largest caves, by the way, is in Kentucky. Stalactites are composed of calcium carbonate, and the calcium carbonate dissolves. It's an insoluble compound that dissolves, dissolves to give us calcium ions and carbonate ions. If we were to write a KSP for this, it's similar to the Ks we wrote before, but what we're going to do is call it a KSP because it's specifically the solubility product constant, we're multiplying the two ions together, of the two soluble ions, the calcium ion, which we see here, and then the carbonate ion, which we see here. Remember, we do not include solids when we write a KSP expression. Well, what is KSP? A couple things about it. We know that saturated solutions contain the maximum amount of solute ions possible at a given temperature along with the solid. And we see in this photograph, I have a, it's an x-ray of a tooth. But unfortunately in this tooth, we see there's a little bit of what we call decay or a cavity. Now KSP actually has something to do with that because KSP depends on the solubility of the solute or the substance. And for example, tooth enamel is insoluble. But that, the fact that it's insoluble doesn't mean that it's not slightly soluble. So what happens if we get food, bacteria, particularly sugar in there, any bacteria in our mouth can actually make that enamel more soluble. If you drink tap water, there's been something added to tap water called fluoride ions. Our water in fluoride combines with the tooth enamel to create an entirely new compound. Now this entirely new compound is actually less soluble to water and less soluble in water and so as a consequence people do not get as much tooth decay so that's another instance where we see ksp now you see this is actually an x-ray you may recognize this of the intestine now this may not make sense because we know x-rays take x-rays of our bones but they don't take uh they they go through soft tissue so how do physicians accomplish and get an x-ray of a soft tissue. What they do is they ask the patient to, to drink a solution or a suspension of barium sulfate. It looks sort of like what milk of magnesia would look like. This is sort of surprising when you think about actually barium ions, which is BA2+. Barium ions are actually toxic in the human body. Now, how would a could a patient take barium ions and that not, that not causing problems? Well, fortunately, we know the KSP of barium sulfate is very, very small. And a small KSP means barium is not very soluble in water. So as a consequence, when this patient drinks a barium sulfate, not many barium ions are released. It does not allow the x-rays to go through the solid suspension. The x-ray will give us an idea of what the intestine looks like. How do you compare KSPs? If you want to compare KSPs, here's this is a, a table of KSPs of different insoluble substances. Really, the best thing you want to do is compare compounds that have a similar mole ratio. Here I've highlighted two of them. For example, silver chloride and silver iodide. You will be given a table of KSPs, so you don't need to write anything like this down. But let's say you were given these uh, KSPs of these two compounds. You can compare these directly because when silver chloride dissolves, it gives you one silver ion and one chloride ion. And when silver iodide dis uh, dissolves, it gives you one silver ion and one iodide ion. So that's a one-to-one -one ratio. But if we compare these two KSPs, we see silver iodide is a much smaller number. The smaller the number, the less soluble the compound is in water. And so let's so of these two compounds, we'd say silver iodide is much less soluble than silver chloride based on the KSPs at this temperature. Let's look at another substance that's not one to one. Let's look at calcium fluoride and calcium hydroxide. Both of these compounds dissolve to give you one calcium ion and two other ions. The calcium fluoride gives you two fluoride ions and the, and the calcium hydroxide dissolves to gives you two hydroxide ions. So both of these compounds dissolve. They, they dissolve in a one to two ratio. So that means we can compare their KSPs. Now of these two, two, we see that the calcium fluoride is a much smaller number and so that means that is less soluble in water than calcium hydroxide. That's how we can use KSP tables to compare the solubilities of two compounds. Lake Michigan, huge body of water around us. There are compounds dissolved in Lake Michigan. Even in a huge body of water like this, we could find things out about solubility. We know Lake Michigan is actually the seventh largest by volume lake in the world. It's the second largest Great Lake. So the volume of Lake Michigan is 4.92 times 10 to the 12th liters is huge number. That's a huge volume. If we took that volume and we knew the KSP of a substance such as iron 3 sulfide, we could actually figure how much 
determine how much iron three sulfide would dissolve in all of Lake Michigan. The KSP for iron three sulfide is really small. It's 1.44 times 10 to the minus, minus 90, 88. That's a tiny number. If you use this entire volume of Lake Michigan and determine the molar solubility of the compound, you'd actually find the amount of iron, iron three sulfide that you could dissolve in Lake Michigan is actually less than two liters. So if you want to try this, give it a try. And I've actually already worked out the problem. Let's do some problems here. Now, before you do this, I'd like you to write down these three boxes and what they mean. They're, this is extremely important. Most of the problems that we're, we're going to be working will be going between these two things right here. We'll, we'll have the solubility of the ions and the KSP. So we're going to use those solubilities to find KSP. Now, the one thing we will not do today, but you should be able to do this pretty readily, is going from the solubility of the compound in grams per liter to solubility of the compound in moles per liter. The only way, the way you do that is simply by dividing by the molar mass of the compound. So that's pretty simplistic. We've changed grams moles a lot in the class, so that's not a big deal. Today, we're going to concentrate on these three boxes. If we have the solubility of the compound, how that compares to the solubility of the ions, and then how we use the solubility of the, ion, solubility of the ions to get the KSP. Now, hopefully you notice these arrows are going both ways. So not only are we going to go from solubility to KSP, we're also going to go from KSP to solubility of the ions and also solubility of the compound. So we're going to do three sample problems today. This is a setup I'd like you to use for every single problem. I'd like you to do these three things. Let's say, for example, here we have silver chloride. Now, you don't have to memorize solubility rules. Most of the compounds we're going to be looking at, the great majority, are insoluble. And with silver chloride, is no exception. So here are the three things I'd like you to do. Number one, write down the dissolving of the solid into ions. Now, optional for that is states. I've written solid, aqueous, aqueous. When you write charges, it's understood that those ions are aqueous. And we'll understand that the thing you start with is solid. But first, write the solubility of the compound. The second thing I'd like you to do is write X's that represent the mole ratio. Here we see silver chloride dissolves into one silver ion and one chloride ion. That mole ratio is extremely important to do correct problems for this. And then finally, what we've been doing all along is to write a K expression. Now the only thing that's different is we're going to put a little subscript that says SP. So our KSP expression, remember that's a capital K, is going to be the concentration of the one ion, which in this case is silver, times the concentration of the other ion, which in this uh, situation is a chloride ion. So let's begin our problems. The first one, let's go ahead and just see if we can write a KSP expression for calcium fluoride. First, you have to be able to write the correct formula for calcium fluoride. Remember, you have a, a periodic table with you, and so that should be helpful. You can always use your ion, polyatomic ion sheet as well. And then the other thing you want to keep handy as you're doing these is the chart that we have with our four boxes. So first, you'd want to write this, this dissolving of the compound into the ions. Calcium fluoride is the form is CaF2 and one calcium fluoride dissolves into one calcium and two fluoride ions. The second thing we, you would do, remember we're writing three steps for each one of these, is to write your X's. When that dissolves, you get one calcium and two fluoride. And so this is where this step comes into, in, into play here. The solubility of the compound is going to be the same as calcium because that's a one-to-one -one ratio. But fluoride, when you change that to the solubility of that ion, Fluoride will be twice as high, and that's why, why we want to write X and 2X. Then finally, we want to write the KSP expression. And KSP for this would be simply the concentration, remember brackets mean concentration of calcium ion, times the concentration of fluoride ion squared. So that's it. Example one done. All right, let's go on. Example two. What is the KSP of calcium hydroxide if at 26 degrees Celsius, remember temperature is not used to solve the problem, but, but temperature, temperature is determinative of how much solid dissolves. The concentration of calcium in this specific solution is 1.3 times 10 to the minus 2 molar. Remember, molar means moles per liter. First, we're going to do our three steps. So here we go. Uh, we write calcium hydroxide with the correct formula. Calcium hydroxide dissolves into one calcium ion and two hydroxide ions. Next, you want to put your X's in. When it dissolves, you get one calcium and two hydroxide. So we say it dissolves into X and 2X, a 1 to 2 ratio. Then finally, we want to write our KSP expression, and it should look like this. 
KSP is equal to the concentration of calcium times the concentration of hydroxide squared. So finally, what you want to do is input the information that you've been given in the problem after you've done your three steps. So what they've done here is we've got the concentration of calcium. So basically, we have X. So this number can go directly into X. This number is also the molar solubility of the compound because this is a one-to-one -one ratio with the number we see in, written in front of the solid in the compound. However, what is the concentration of the hydroxide? Well, if when it dissolves, you get 1.3 times 10 to the minus 2 molar of calcium. The concentration of hydroxide should be twice that. It should be two points. Instead of 1.3, it should be 2.6. So you just simply take this number and multiply it by 2. And so let's insert those into our formula. And so we say KSP is equal to the concentration of calcium, 1.3 times 10 to the minus 2, times the concentration of hydroxide, 2.6 times 10 to the minus 2 squared. Now you need to put all this in your calculator. So grab your calculator and put it in. And hopefully when you solve it, you end up with this number. The KSP for calcium hydroxide based on the concentration of the calcium is 1.89 times 10 to the minus 6. Now remember for KSP, there's no units. It just gives us an indication of how much, how much products, how much reactants. Are, are in this react or in this process. This is called dissolving. Notice all these KSPs are going to be pretty small numbers. So that's it. Let's do example number three, our last problem. Example number three. Now here's a question. The KSP of calcium fluoride is 3.9 times 10 to the minus 11th at 25 degrees Celsius. Calculate the solubility of calcium fluoride and the concentration of all the ions. So basically what we're going to do is go from KSP the solubility of the ions, and they're going to use that ratio to go to solubility of the compound. We all we, we're going to start with is our three steps, so let's do that. So the first step is to write this dissolving of the solid compound into ions, and that should look like this. Calcium solid produces one calcium and two fluoride ions. Next, we want to write our X's in. When this dissolves, you get X of calcium and two X of fluoride. So one calcium, actually, calcium fluoride particle gives you three particles or three different ions. Okay, next you want to write your KSP expression. KSP is equal to the concentration, oops, that says copper. This should be calcium here, sorry about that. Concentration of calcium 2 plus times the concentration of fluoride minus. And that should be fluoride minus there, sorry about that. And then we want to insert our values into this problem. So what we have, we have the KSP, which is 3.9 times 10 to the minus 11th, and so that's going to go in for our KSP. But what are we going to put in for the concentration of calcium, which is right here? What will we put in for the concentration of fluoride, which is right here? Well, for calcium, we're going to put in the value X. And then for fluoride, we're going to put in the value 2X. So the next step should look like this. 3.9 times 10 to the minus 11, which is our KSP that stated, is equal to X times 2X quantity squared. Now, when you, when you square 2X, this is going to give you 4X squared, and then you multiply by X, and that's going to give you 4X cubed. So the next step is 3.9 times 10, 10 to the minus 11 is equal to 4X cubed. Now you need to solve for X. To do this, if 3.9 times 10 to the minus 11 a divide by 4 and take the cube root of that. Now if you don't rem remember how to take a cube root, what you can basically do is use a carrot top and in parentheses put 1 divided by 3 above that and then put enter. When you do that you should find that x is equal to 2.1 times 10 to the minus 4. You notice that should actually tell us two things that the question is asking. That should tell us the concentration of calcium and it should also tell us a molar solubility of the compound. It's going to tell us how many moles of calcium fluor uh, fluoride will dissolve in a liter of solution. That told us the concentration of calcium, like we said. The X is also the molar solubility of the compound. And then finally, what's the concentration of fluoride? Well, for every one calcium, we're going to get two fluorides. So you're going to multiply that by two and get 4.2 times 10 to the minus 4. I love chemistry. I love chemistry. I love chemistry.